Oh, hey folks, welcome back to KEI Fabrication. That hasn't been out in 20,000 miles. Alright, I'm making the little pieces to fill in the corners of my rack mounting brackets on the cross member for the Mazda. Um, you folks have seen me done brackets a bunch of times, but if you're new here, I sanded the boiler skin off of the plate. I sprayed it with some layout dye. And I actually had my cardboard templates already cut out. And I use a tungsten holder while you're sharpening the tungsten. And I actually use the tungsten as my scribe. So it's very easy to manage. It's got knurled edges on it. And it's just a nice thing to hold on to. So, uh, and then if you're trying to use a thin, small piece of paper to trace it out, a uh, small magnet helps to hold it in place so you're not chasing it around. The larger the template, the more magnets you can use. You can even use a welding magnet to hold your cardboard down to the metal plate. Alright, I'm going to cut them out. Alright, so one of the strategies I used was I cut all of the straight cuts first and I cut the smaller pieces out uh, before I cut the larger ones out. And the reason why I did that is when you have small pieces, the larger the material is, the more of a handlebar, if you will, that you have to, to uh, control the part and your fingers aren't close to the blade. So uh, when I do get close to the blade, I always use a pusher just like in woodworking. Alright, hopefully that's a useful tidbit. 
All right, so I got my pieces cut out and the object is to box in the end of my cross member to reinforce the rack bracket that extended off. When I originally built this cross member, I had no intention to doing this. So I made it fancy and rounded the corners. Well, shame on me, because now I have to fill that corner back in. I'm gonna do it with um, new material and I'm gonna TIG weld it all together for extra insurance and strength. All right, gang, I'm just doing the final check of the fitment of the rack on the cross member. I just did a bunch of welding to fill in where the extensions went on. And obviously things move around when you weld it, so I wanted to make sure that the rack was going on without forcing it. And that all of my mounting still works. I got to clean this all up. It's been in the shop for, you know, almost uh, seven or eight months. and got rid of all maybe the grinding dust out of the inside, put the boots back on, got the tie rod ends installed so they're ready to do the alignment. So the last thing I want to do is I want to put a nice coat of paint on this before I install it. Had to check this first. However, there's one more aspect of the fitment of the rack and pinion that I have to uh, double check before I can kind of call it done. So I'll show you what that is in just a moment, but it has something to do with those boxes over there. So uh, let me get uh, ready to uh, install that to see if that fits. Thank you. 
Whoa. I did not expect that. That's coolant. Oh boy, I'm going to um, overflow my can here. That is a shocker right there. All right, folks. Three guesses as to what's inside the box. Thanks for sh using Moroso products. I used to work in the packaging department at Moroso, by the way. So, nice job, gang. Catalog, some decals. This is what we're after. Okay, so I don't know if you can see inside there. But this has the trap doors in all four directions. So this is technically a road race pan. Uh, however, it works great as a drag race pan. So when you slam on the brakes, it uh, shuts the oil flow off from running away from the pickup and opens the door at the back of the pan so it works its way around directly to the oil pump pickup. Uh, also left and right turns, you can hear them trap doors it shuts it off and this is the the wide kick out pan for the increased capacity and lower ground clearance so this pan does not bolt directly to the bell housing and those really long fasteners that go all the way down it actually comes with fasteners to replace that so they really thinking of everything the baffle here is to allow the drain back and also prevent the oil from sloshing up any more towards the windage tray than necessary. I'm really excited about this. And, you know, when you buy the pan, it also comes with a billet oil filter adapter housing and the provision for an oil pressure sensor or sending unit. So, um, actually, these bolts are intended for this location because of the extra thickness of the billet oil filter adapter and it's already hard fastened to the pan with two other fasteners so these will stick through and go into the block with the proper engagement and then you replace those the fasteners that used to go here get relocated from here to here so it's got the oil passages going directly to and from the supply and return from the oil filter. All right, pretty cool. 
So this is Moroso's LS swap pan. Basically anything that had a pickup truck pan or a rear sump should fit in just about any chassis. I chose this, there's two versions. One has the sloped sump, short in the front, wide in the back to encourage the oil to return to the oil pickup. Um, so why did I choose or have to purchase an oil pan? Well, first of all, I'm really uh, afraid of the rod knock syndrome, right? So I've told you that I want to road race this thing. I'm circle tracking this thing. Sometime I want to drift it. However, I'm doing entry level drifting. I don't plan on banging off the rev limiter at 7,500 like, like most do. Uh, my rev limiter is probably going to be set to 6,500 because I want to keep the parts in the engine. So anyway, I wanted to minimize the oil starvation. This is the way to do it. It's a baffle pan. It'll do all of the things that I want it to do. Drag race, road race, circle track, and drifting. Um, however, the primary reason why I had to do this, this is the snowball effect, right? So I lowered the truck two inches. The truck pan actually stuck below the cross member two inches. And if I did not make a change to the oil pan, my oil pan clearance from the ground to the bottom of the pan would have been four inches. So I would have cleaned this thing off on manhole covers, parking lot curbing, you know, driving in and out of anything, speed bumps, you name it. Uh, I would have had a shattered oil pan. So this will actually hopefully be flush with the cross member. Just to get to this point, I had to go through everything that you've seen, front suspension changes, steering geometry, rack positioning, because it all had to mount to that cross member. The measurements for this pan indicate that it should fit and clear the new location of the steering assembly the cross member that I fabricated and the location of the rack and pinion. It shouldn't be much different than the stock pan and that was Moroso's intention. So there's only, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this because if the cross member I just worked so hard to completely finish has to be modified or the rack and pinion needs to be relocated, man I'm back to the drawing board and uh, I am hoping to avoid that like you don't understand so all right again I'm super nervous about putting this up to the bottom of the engine then I can put my cross member in put the rack and pinion in place the other thing that I'm trying to do is educate everyone that's in the same boat that I am trying to LS swap a Mazda pickup truck surprisingly there's more than just a couple um, I put the headers on to make sure that the exhaust header collectors would clear the pan and the primary clearance problem would have been the steering geometry and the cross member. So let's see how we did on the preliminary calculations. Before I get too far ahead of myself, another key component to that Morocco oil pan is this. So this is the oil pump pickup for the LS1 pan. More decals. Alright, so this comes packaged with the anti-rust 
oiled paper. So why do you need one of these? Well, because the sump is shorter, obviously the floor of the pan raises up. Uh, Moroso designs them specifically for the pan. This is a rear sump, so it goes into the stock oil pump location, bolts up to one of the stock windage tray studs, and sits properly the correct distance off the floor of the pan. And just so you are, have everything you need, this is the advanced material o-ring to go on the pickup tube to kind of solve that problem that all of the LS version engines had with this style of connection to the oil pump. This gets brittle and cracks and it allows cavitation and it doesn't suck the oil out of the pan. So um, this is a necessary component to run that pan. I'm not going to put this in the second because I'm not sure this engine is staying in here, but I do need to confirm that all of the other things that I've gone and modified are going to work out. So let's get back to that. Alright, two things we need to pay attention to here. The first one is that it clears the stock Mazda original cross member brackets nicely. So that's encouraging. The second thing is, is it sits ahead of the brackets, let me find it here, sits ahead of the brackets, the sump just a touch, so I'll have to see how that works with my cross member. Step one is a victory. See if I can get you the, the money shot here and see that my cross member has excellent clearance. I can fit my finger between it all the way around. So, whew. step one, well, actually, step two, because getting it onto the engine uh, with all the factory Mazda stuff in the way was one thing. All right, let's try the other component. I should have started from the other side. Let's go this way. Steering shaft out of the way. Alright. I'm happy about that has the clearance that I expected. Whew, that was uh, a little bit of nerve wracking getting to this point. Well, looks kind of cool, doesn't it? All right, so now that I have the knowing of the oil pan clearance and fitment, I can take that cross member out, degrease it, paint it. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it can't go in to stay because now I think I got to pull the engine. So, uh, never ends. 
All right, folks, that's it for this time. Remember, if you can't be good, be spectacular.